Welcome back to Gale Bearers Repairs. Today, we're just going to uh, replace the rear brake pads on this 2017 Honda Jazz. Now, I've not done them on this car before, so we'll see how we get on, we'll learn as we go. If you found it informative and useful, could you please like, subscribe and share. Right, let's get on with it. Okay, so we're going to do the rear brakes on this 2017 Honda Jazz. I've done the other side already, the rear brakes this is, and what we've got, two bolts there, one at the upper bolt, and then the lower bolt to undo. That's the caliper bolts. And when I've done the other side, this brake flexi, he's a bit taut. He doesn't give you much flexibility. So I recommend you undo that. I'll show you undoing that one, just to release it from the from its bracket. And then we'll crack on with uh, doing the actual brake job. Right, so it's just this one securing bolt here. He's a 12 mil head, 12 mil socket head or spanner head. Get his spanner on, give him a clout. And we just undo that one. So when I've done the other side, I found that the the brake hose was a bit taut. So if we just remove that, it just gives us the flexibility to move the caliper a bit. Right, I'll now set you up for the removal of the caliper. Okay, so what we've got is a 12 mil head bolt there and a 12 mil head bolt there. So all we're going to do is crack that one off and crack the top one off. And then we'll spin them out. That's that one. Just a standard bolt, nothing special. I think it's got a fine thread on it. That's the first one gone. And then we get rid of the top one. So all we're gonna do now is we're just gonna pull the caliper towards the camera, out towards the rear of the car. So that's disconnected the caliper. And by by slackening off this flexible pipe, it gives us the ability to come your way. So we'll do that now, we'll give it a wiggle. You wiggle it out, wiggle it out. It may be bound on because of the handbrake. It's got a self ratcheting or self adjusting handbrake on this. So you may need to prise it out a bit. Just prise the caliper off. There we go, so he's starting to wiggle out. He's still connected to the handbrake cable at the bottom. So you're forcing against that as well. So what we've got, I don't know if you can see there, we have got a handbrake cable attached there. That's the handbrake cable that's attached to the caliper. And then the hydraulic line, the flexi, also attached to the caliper. So we just take them off and let it swing Swing it down out of the way, it's not a problem. So it's just hanging down there out of the way. <laughs> I'll push stop on the camera somehow. So um, I'll put the, the caliper swung down out of the way and um, this now exposes the two pads, the inner and the outer pad. You can see there the inner pad, we'll prise him off, the inner pad, it's got that tang on him, that big tang. So he's the inner one. Oh, yeah, they're quite nicely worn these. These were advised on the MLT for the father-in-law's car. So the inner has got that big tab on it and the outer pad has not got a tab on it. Just prise them out. They've come out from their, from their track. There we go. So there's the outer pad. And then what we've got to do 
is there's a stainless steel plate, a rubbing plate that the pads ride on. So the pads ride in and out on this plate and the same up the top. So when the brakes are applied, they squeeze and the pads move on this. So we want this all cleaned up. So we take this off, it just prizes out. It's only a stainless steel, a spring stainless steel guide. And that's all it is. We're gonna wire brush up and clean them and also wire brush the, the uh, hanger there, the brake hanger. So we take the top one off as well. They just clip in, nothing special. Take him off. You need to ensure that you've got a dust mask on doing this job. Um, it could be harmful in the future, the dust that's given off here. So we just get a wire brush and we wire brush off this area that those plates were on. We just give it a clean up. And then we give it a spray with some brake cleaner. So that's cleaned that up. And then what we've got to do is just clean up those two spring clips before we refit them. Okay, so we're just going to uh, clean up these little spring clips. There's the little springs that clip into the caliper. So you just press them down on that. So we just give them a clean up. So that's how we've got them looking, just with a quick wire brush. So that's more than adequate for us to uh, put on the uh, car. So just a little little spray brake brake cleaner there. All I use here as a tray is a roller tray for decorating. It's perfect. I always find this works really well. Catches all your catches all your um, brake cleaner and that evaporates off anyway and just leaves the dust in the bottom to clean out. That's useful to know. So there's my two spring clips are the same the top and the bottom. The upper and the lower ones are no different. So here's the spring clip and that opening obviously accommodates the disc. So all we're doing, got them little tangs there and they just go in there to locate it. So we just put it on and press it down. You know, you're hearing binding down in there. It's only like an interference fit, it only binds in there, it just grips. So that's that fully down. So that's the lower, the lower guy. And then we just do the same with the upper. Probably not gonna be able to see it so well there, but uh, same thing. So there's the upper in as well. Now we'll uh, get the pads. So here's our pads. That's the inner pad there with that tang on it and the outer pad there. I'll just show you the outer pad going in before I grease it up. So you just catch it there, catch it and compress. You watch up and compress there, that spring. And then we get the bottom little screwdriver and just prise him in. So you're just pushing that, that spring down in order to get it in. And that's it. That's the pad in. Uh, you wanna make sure that it moves freely like that there. It, it's got the ability to move. And on the bottom, don't know if that's in focus. And that's got the ability to slide. So all these stainless guides are <laughs> our guides <laughs> so uh, they just allow that pad to move in and out and grip the uh, disc so I'll take it off again now and I'll show you what I like to do people some people may not like this but uh, I like to do it I just just a dab of 
copper slip there, copper grease. That's all we're after. We don't want too much on it. So that's what I like to do. So look, watch that spring compress up there as I push it there. And then the bottom one, I'll just do with a little terminal screwdriver in order to let it catch in. A bit fiddly, but uh, easy enough. There he goes. So a little bit of a fiddle, but I've just got a very slight amount of copper grease there. But some people would say they don't like that. Right, I'll put the inner in there. It's the same as the outer, same procedure. A little dollop of grease, nothing much. And then we plonk him in. So there he is in. And he's got the ability to move at the top and at the bottom. So he's not going to drag. So that's the pads fitted. Now, this has got a self adjusting handbrake. So the caliper on this car incorporates the handbrake and the foot brake. So we have to wind the piston in. We can't do it like a front one where we get grips and just grip the piston in. We need a special tool for this. So I'll show you the tool. So on this car, it's got the piston there. On a standard conventional piston on the front of the car, you would be able to just get a pair of grips and push that in with the grips and compress it. But this has got a ratcheting mechanism for the handbrake because the handbrake cable is attached to it. So this needs to be rotated and pushed at the same time. And we do that with, I don't know if I'm getting shot. We do that with the use of this tool here. They're only cheap on Amazon. I think this was uh, under 15 pounds. It wasn't a lot of money, 15, 20 pound, um, but it's worth having. So I've selected this. This is what we need. You've got various, various things for various cars. But we don't need that, we'll get rid of that. So select the end, which is magnetic. That magnetically sticks to there. And that end, those two pins, those two posts correspond in there with that. So we go on there, look. So those two pins go in with that, that plus sign there. So he magnetically sticks to there. And then what we're going to do is wind him in. So as we're winding in with the threads, we're turning that. So as it's turning, it's rotating the piston. So you can see the end turning. But also while it's turning, it's going inwards on the threads. So it's ro so it's rotating it's rotating the piston and moving it forward in as we do it. So we get this one. Let's get a bit closer, shall we? So we're in closer now. So this is what you can expect. So you put this one in there. That's what he reacts against. I don't know if that's clear. So those, those two prongs go into that plus sign of there. So then fiddly there so he's in line on the piston put the strong back in and then you do him up so as he's winding I'll just move the camera out to the side a little bit yeah that's better so as you do him up they're a bit of a faff these things so as you do it up, 
it's rotating it. Come back every now and again to not let that seal pick up because you'll pick up on the piston. So as you rotate it, it's rotating it and pushing it in at the same time. Don't know if that's very clear or not. You'd have to take my word for it. And this is literally something you've just got to experience yourself. So, but you know to use this tool and you can refer to this video of how to do it. So that's it. So the piston now has gone in. You just gotta be careful that you don't break that seal. So I'll take that off, look. So that piston now is well retracted. So he's right back into the caliper now. So it now gives us room to go over the pads. Right, so we've wound the we've cleaned off those, fitted the new pads, we've wound the caliper back. So the piston's back in the uh, caliper now. And uh, I nearly forgot the sliders. So the sliders, this bottom one is very stiff. You can see he's barely moving, he barely springs back. Yeah, he's, he's tight this one, so we'll give him a force. Oh, he's got a bit of movement there. So we've got a bit of movement on him now. So he would have caused a very stiff break, a dragging break. So it's important that you do this. So we just unhook. Unhook the uh, rubber boot, don't split them. Just unhook it from there. And then we pull out the pin, the slider pin. Same with the top one. That one's quite free, but the bottom one wasn't. So we just pull them out. Now I think they're different. Um, I'll wipe the bottom one, we'll have a look at that first. They've got a bit of grease on them. Oh, so the bottom one. This bottom one's got flats on it. It's not round. It's uh, it's got flat machinings there and there. So it's got a couple of machines marks. Top one, probably different. Let's have a look. Give them a wipe off. Yeah, and he's just a round pin. So the top one is a round pin. The bottom one has got the flats on it. So all we've done, we've just given it a wipe off now. So we've given them a clean. I'll just use some lithium base grease on these. And we don't want much on them. So here's the top one. We're not after much at all. Because what can happen if you overfill this with grease, this is going into a blind hole. So this hole, there's nowhere for the grease to exit out the other side. So if you get too much grease, you'll lock, you'll hydraulic lock onto the, onto the grease. So we just want to smear, not too much. That's a nice amount. Don't want to overdo these. So then just slide him back in, make sure your boot is attached and that you've got full travel. So he's free to move now. That's a beautiful thing. So uh, <laughs> we'll do the lower one, take the pin out, and this is the one with the flats on it, bit of grease. Again, we're not overloading these. So this was the one that was stiff just now. So got the rubber boot. Here we go now, so he's, we've got movement now, yeah. So that's lovely, look. It wasn't doing that before. So this brake will be freer than it was previously. So that's that. We can now put the caliper back on. I like to put a bit of grease, a bit of copper grease, just on the end of that piston. Just on the piston there, on those flats, because that's what comes into contact with the back of the pad. So just on those, doesn't need to be much. And then the only other place it contacts the pad is on the back of these ears of the caliper there. So just a light smear. Nothing major. And this one's got the anti-rattle spring there to hold the pads in place. So to stop the caliper rattling. I'm just gonna put a little smear along there as well. Not a lot, just a little bit. So now we can lift up the 
caliper because because it's got the handbrake cable attached down below I'm gonna have to pull it this way to get it to go over so we give it a tug and that's why i released that's why i released that one as well it gives it a little bit of travel so we can come out over and we've got to get them over that pad there he goes i don't know if that was clear yeah i think it was clear so he just goes over that pad there make sure the inner pad's there as well he's in and then we just got to uh push in our slider pins hold on i think i've lost you there we go so we just got to push in the slider pin to get the caliper over it so there and the lower and there so that's just allowing that in and then we get our bolt again i've got a little bit of copper grease on it other people would say not to but uh, i like it do up that one put him in get the lower one and then we do them up oh he's uh the brake pipe fouls it it's in the way so this bolt is just going into the inside of that the slider pin that's where you you squid this slider pin is threaded inside so all you're doing is doing this bolt up to the pin firm nip and then the same on the lower we do that one up and that's him just a firm nip there we go fairly tight but not over tight and that's it so we want to check the caliper moves freely which it does look it's only a little bit of movement and then as we do the handbrake a few times and the foot brake this piston's going to come out and pin the pads onto the disc so we have to do that in a minute when we reassemble we go in the car and push the brake pedal a few times so now we're finished there we can put the flexi pipe back on. A little dollop of grease on it. Because it'll probably be me here in the future trying to undo it, so I want it to come undone and not shear off. So there, it's back together. That's the outer pad is new. And um, the inner pad as well. That's that spring clip. I just put a dollop of grease on that holds the pads in. Um, that's it. The top slider, the lower slider. We haven't touched any of the handbrake mechanism. Didn't touch any of that. We stayed away from it. I think by uh, disconnecting that one has give us the travel that we required. All right, put the wheel on and uh, we'll apply the brakes a few times. So there we go. Not too bad of a job. The rear pads on this 2017 Honda Jazz. Uh, you do need that specialist tool. You will require that to the brake wind off tool, they're called. I got mine on Amazon for about £15. It wasn't a lot of money. Um, and it is required on a lot of the modern cars now to wind off the rear calipers, not the fronts. Um, something you need to note that when you've got the car back together, you need to depress the brake pedal half a dozen times just to take up the slack between the pads and the caliper and the piston. And because it's the rear, the handbrake's connected, do the handbrake up and down half a dozen times to get that operative. The handbrake will not be as efficient as normal until the brakes have bed in over the next, uh, next week or so. Um, so you've just got to be aware of that. But there we go. Very basic task, really. So uh, if you found it useful and informative, could you please like, subscribe and share. And I'll see you next time.